All right, hey everyone, I'm going to free you from the stock gateways from T-Mobile Home Internet, Verizon Home Internet, or AT&T Internet Air. This also works if you have a data plan SIM card that you want to use as well. This here is a outdoor 5G unit that you can mount um, on your rooftop, you can mount it on a TV tower, which is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to show you how you can do this and the types of speeds that you can see from this device versus using something like their stock gateways. So I have other videos that go into more details about setup and configurations, but this one I'm going to really just walk through exactly how I take the SIM card out of this T-Mobile Home Internet one. I put it in here and I put this outside. I'm going to show you the speed difference that I get between it. They just did a firmware update, which makes this step easier. So that's why I'm finally going to, to do this. So this gateway here is the T-Mobile Sagemcom 5688W gateway. It's a decent gateway, but it has lots of limitations um, because T-Mobile locks down the software on it. And now what it has on the bottom of it is a physical SIM card, which you can just slide this little uh, door over. Kind of hard, actually. Once I slide that door over, I get access to a little SIM card that can come out, and there it is. So it's very easy to remove the SIM card, but there is uh, something that T-Mobile does. You might have heard about their geofencing that they do. That also is kind of true. This does not mess with that. You can still um, do this without a problem. You can take it out of the gateway. On the back of these units, they have a IMEI number, which is kind of like a serial number, but it's for a cellular device. T-Mobile looks at that, and they want to have their range of gateways have a specific set of IMEIs that they're really looking for to match up with this. So what you can do here is you can actually have this one help um, be that same IMEI so that this will work for you. So I'm going to show you how you do that. It's really a quick step here. I'm going to show you on my tablet. And we'll do that first. And I'm doing that down here. And then I'm going to mount this outside and show you some of the setting uh, special differences you can do for like tower locking, band locking, that kind of stuff. There's a bridge mode on here. Um, but really the importance is the type of speed difference you can get versus having a gateway inside your house uh, by having this unit outdoors. So what I've done here is I plugged in the heavy power over ethernet little adapter. This comes included with the ELSIS unit here. And by the way, I do have links to uh, this ELSIS unit that you can buy it uh, from the wireless haven. I also have um, links for other little devices that I use here, like this Ethernet to USB-C adapter, as well as some other stuff I'll have in the video as well. But this is how the unit is powered. What's really cool about it is that it only needs a Ethernet uh, cable ran from the gateway itself to inside the house. So uh, what I actually did for me, since I'm going up a TV tower and going across my basement, is I ordered a 150-foot Ethernet cable. You can actually go up to probably close to 300 feet and uh, still get power to the unit every foot you go you lose a little bit of voltage and power so uh, 150 foot uh, will be fine it should be fine and uh, that's what I'm gonna run I think it comes like a 50 foot uh, cable so if all you need is 50 feet it comes included with it but um, what I've done here is I've hooked up this uh, power adapter with one Ethernet cable going to this and then the other Ethernet cable going to a USB-C adapter so I can log in from my tablet but you could do this from a computer or something else as well do note that there is not um, you know uh, Wi-Fi access this is not a Wi-Fi router uh, it's designed to be hooked up by Ethernet itself so I'm gonna hook mine up to my own Wi-Fi mesh system for my property okay so what I've done is now I've logged in I just went to 192.168.10.254 that is the default address for this ELSIS unit you can see here there's no SIM card in it and there's no signal, um, which is what you would expect. Um, but then there are some settings here. I won't go through, through them all because, like I said, they um, I have other videos that go through those. But there's a special um, address, which you have to add a uh, slash send AT command at the top here. And that is what gets you to this special page here. This allows you to send AT commands to the unit um, over Ethernet. So now I'm going to hit the debug mode. And then I am going to type in the special code or the special commands that I need to actually do the, um, the IMEI revision here. All right, so here is the command you put in is AT plus EGMR equals one comma seven comma and then double quotes your IMEI that you want to put into this device. 
and then in quotes, and then I'm going to hit the send commands. Okay, and it said okay, and it uh, read out that the command was set successfully. And then now I'm going to turn off debug mode, and then they ask you to restart the unit. So I'm going to go in here and restart the unit. Okay, so there's a couple ways you can restart it. You can just hit this little, um, you know, hamburger signal and hit restart Implemax there, or you can obviously just unplug it from power and repower it up, let it boot back up. All right, so here just to verify before I go up and put it outside, I typed in AT plus EGMR equals zero, and the zero is a read versus a write. So before the one was a write, but zero is read, um, and then the comma seven is looking for the IMEI number. And then the response there, I can verify that I got the correct IMEI. You do want to make sure that you have the correct IMEI. You have no typos, you know, no extra digits in there as all, at all. All right, so now I can take the SIM card and I can slide it in here. You put it um, in either slot X. I just prefer slot one. It's easier for me to keep track of. It does have two slots, so if you wanted to have uh, two different ones. It only has one modem, so it can only use one at a time. But I'm going to put that in there, and then I can verify that it actually works as I intend it to. Uh, again, down here, just double check before I get outside and, and put it up high in the air. Okay, so now it's starting to connect. It is booting up, and you'll start to see uh, it shows uh, SIM cards in there. shows me some signal. I'm in the basement, so I get poor signal. It shows me T-Mobile. Right now, it, it shows no connection, but if I click Update, um, I can get it to update here. And uh, we'll see in a few uh, seconds here, it will fully um, connect to the signal. So we can go here to system status and we can see that it is registered. I can see I'm on band N71 and N41. It's giving me, um, if I get some more information here, I can see more details about my cell metrics and I can actually do a speed test down here as well if I wanted to. All right, so the waterproofing for the ethernet jack, you take this little rubber grommet out from inside of here, you unscrew this, and then you wanna put this over the, um, the ethernet here before you connect it to the unit itself um, you slide that over and then you um, you can slide this in you gotta kind of tuck it in if you got on those little lips you might even have to trim up the ethernet um, sheathing a little bit if you have something like this where it has a, a piece I might have to trim this off to get it through there we'll have to see here if I can sneak it in there Looks like I'll be able to fit it through. All right, so you tighten on this piece here to the uh, base of the unit. Take the rubber grommet, burn it over the top, and then you want to sneak the rubber grommet into these little fingers that are all around it. That's what's going to tighten down around it. Last piece, you do this. This is all going to make it tight and weatherproof. And of course, you want to make sure that you have these silicone um, pieces on the bottom of the unit fully. Uh, secure it as well so that the unit is watertight obviously okay she's ready to go up Okay, so here I am up at the top of my roof and uh, luckily I have a construction boom at the house because they're doing siding on my house. So taking advantage of that and I have easy access to my TV antenna mast here. So I'm going to take the LSS unit and I'm actually going to do an extension on it so I have more room. But you can see I have a TV antenna and a, um, that's a cellular booster actually, um, the bottom um, log periodic directional antenna down there as well. So. Let's hook it on. All right, there we go. We got it installed and now we can check the signal. All right, so here I am up in my third floor loft. This is where I have my gateways typically. And then outside these two windows here, this is actually, you can't see because it's nighttime, but the TV antenna mast is actually outside 
this window over here and that Elsa's Ample Max is basically about five feet above my head or so, just above the roof line. Um, so this is the window you could see outside when I was putting that up um, on that uh, construction boom. So right here I have the T-Mobile G4AR. I have it switched to the internal antenna, meaning it's using just the antennas built into it. Uh, but I do have external antennas. I'll kick those on in a second as well. So here I'm going to show you what I'm getting with this stock gateway. If I was just sitting up here, um, and this is the best signal I get is up here. It's a weak signal, so I'm showing two bars out of the five here. If I go into my uh, more advanced settings here, advanced settings, settings, you can see I'm on bin B66. You can look at like the uh, signal strength there, minus 100. Um, for 5G, I can see I'm on N41 with a um, signal to noise of 23 an RSRP of minus 92. So that's why it shows up as a weak signal. So let's do a speed test. All right, so now for this speed test, I'm gonna do them back to back right now. I'm gonna to try to use the exact same servers, so this T-Mobile Detroit, and we'll run it here. So again, this is the stock G4AR antennas. Okay, so what you'll see here is my ping. This is the first thing that I want to point out. It's at 52 milliseconds for unloaded. Um, and then the loaded ping is also very high. So 722 milliseconds for the download. The upload is often way higher for me. So you're talking about uh, like a thousand milliseconds or 2000 milliseconds sometimes. Um, and so that would be one second of a lag. So even though I get pretty good speed, 300 megabits per second download, and today it's reasonable upload, it's six megabits per second. Um, that's usable, but the problem is with those types of high pings, you're going to also get um, worse like gameplay, video conferencing, that kind of stuff. You'll have long uh, lags. And sometimes even up here, my upload will be um, only a few uh, megabits per second. So very unusable. But let's switch that over to the external antenna and see how much that waveform 4x4, which I have over in the attic, helps. I have videos on that if you want to see more about the details of that one. But let's just switch it over to that now. Okay, so now we're on that external antenna in the attic. And you can see that now my signal to noise on the 4G is about 19, still on band B66. Confirmed on the bottom there that I'm still uh, that I am on the external antenna. And then if you see my RSSI there, I think it was what, minus 100 last time, so now it's 10 dB better at minus 90. That is a significant improvement there with that antenna. And then here now for the um, 5G, I'm still on N41. The signal to noise actually went down a little bit, but my strength got a lot better um, there as well. So let's do a test here and see how it does. So right there from the get-go, you can see my ping six get cut in half. So went from 52 to 27, and that was just by changing to an external antenna. So I've seen a lot of improvements with T-Mobile or you know any of these other ones. If you upgrade from their stock units, add some good antennas, or in this case, this Elsus unit here as well is another great way to improve it. So also my speeds with that waveform. I was, what, 300 before? So now it's gone up uh, an extra 130 megabits per second to 430. And I did not move the gateway or do anything different. Same device, same location. Um, that speed just increased. And the upload now is at 22. So, you know, what's that? Uh, over three and a half times faster upload speed um, by adding that intent. So a big improvement. I've been very happy actually with this. But that's where I want to go and hook into the Elsus now and see what that gives me. All right, so now I'm back down in my basement and I'm doing this so I'm directly connected to the Elsa Sample Max, not having it go through my Wi-Fi mesh system or anything like that. And that's also why I went up to the third floor loft was to connect directly from my device to the G4AR so that I'm not, um, you know, uh, maybe muddying the waters with it, my own system. Um, but what I did find is that in my testing that my little Ethernet to USB-C is actually a bottleneck once I start getting to hundreds and hundreds of 
um, maybe it's per second of speed. So I'm not going to use my tablet, I'm going to use my computer to test. Um, I have that Ethernet connected directly to that uh, computer. And I'm going to do that, um, that speed test here. Now, there's a couple things on the ELSIS unit, and that's that it defaults to 5G SA as preferred. That's 5G standalone. So if you just plug it in and, and hop on it, it's going to do that if you have that signal available. But the T-Mobile gateways, even though they're capable from a hardware standpoint, uh, from what I've seen, T-Mobile never lets them go on to 5G SA. There's potentially a lot of speed there, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch to that. But what I'm doing here first, I'm going to actually switch the ELSIS over to 5G NSA so that it should be technically an apples-to-apples -apples comparison there of the speed and performance. So to do that, you do have to go to a unique um, address, and that is your 192.168.10.254. That's the ELSIS Amplimax address. But you have to manually type in the uh, slash send AT command, and that gets you to a little semi-hidden uh, page here. I need to enable the debug mode, and then I type in this... Um, AT command. I'll, I'll have a copy of that in the video description so you can copy and paste it if you want to. But what this is doing is it's um, preferring the um, 5G NSA instead of 5G SA. Now I can change that last digit from a 1 back to a 0 and that will you know go back to the previous setting as well. So I've done that and submitted it and I can turn back off the debug mode because it will uh, maybe cause issues if you don't and then what you can see here is that now I actually have four different connections if you remember my G4AR was what B66 and N41 so this one I have N41 and B66 you can see I have the full 100 megahertz uh, download for N41 my signal level is at minus 75 uh, for that what was it minus 89 I think uh, up upstairs my uh, signal to noise is now up to 30 so that's I think it was 22 or something um, up there with the waveform antenna now granted the waveforms in the attic um, and it's probably maybe five or so feet lower um, but it is in the attic so it's going to have a worse performance based off that by itself as well but then b66 now I have a minus 86 signal to noise 23 um, signal to noise there and then we have B2 now and B12 also added to it so it is aggregating all these connections together and that should help my speed and performance so let me run a speed test on 5G NSA now alright so now right away you can see the ping 14 so what was it 27 on the waveform external antenna 52 on the uh, stock internal antenna G4 AR so this is drastically faster than of course the speed is even blazing faster what were we 300 with the stock gateway so we're double the stock gateway performance using the same 5G technology same tower that kind of stuff and then you can see what we're 47 uh, 48 upload so that is compared to well, we're at six megabits per second upload. So, I mean, the amount of improvement over the stock G4 AR is crazy. And even over a waveform 4x4, um, even though it's, I'm not quite apples to apples, I need to get that uh, waveform outside and up on that tower to do a full comparison. Um, it would definitely get um, better than it does in the attic, but I don't think it would get all the way here to um, this ELSIS directly in there so now what I want to do is switch over to 5G SA so I'm going to go back in here enable this debug mode change the 0 or change the 1 to a 0 we'll send that and then now we should be able to go in here and refresh and yep so now it's on N41 and in a second here it will um, add the um, N25 there it goes um, it'll add in 25 so that's what mine seems to default now I can do band locking and I can tell it to not do in 25 or in 41 for that matter if I, if I really wanted to um, but so let's do a speed test here now I want to try to keep it on the same 
um, server just so that we're fair and let's run a speed test and see what we get so 10 millisecond ping so very good ping you can see my speeds are still up there it's even a little bit higher on SA but around 600 megabits per second very impressive there hopefully we'll see if I get my um, my upload eked out I've been getting uh, kind of a range of uploads for some reason on my SA I've actually had several tests I was tested earlier today I was getting over a hundred megabits per second consistently with SA I think this is one of the downsides to 5G SA is that it sometimes depends on the T-Mobile network and what they're doing but I have certainly seen many times in fact I'm sure I have some pictures of it here of um, 5G SA there we go um, this was earlier today I had a little bit slower download but I had over 115 upload um, and so really that's not prioritization because that's normally just hurts your, your download so I think that's their network but um, unfortunately live for this video it's not showing that 100 um, megabits per second plus upload but I have certainly gotten that many times over the past several days um, so this unit has really impressed me with the ping with the speed and unfortunately this uh, app on the um, on the desktop doesn't give you a loaded uh, ping rates but they're typically on the Elsys I'm in the uh, 100s for milliseconds on download and upload so significantly faster than the um, loaded pings on the G4 AR even with a waveform out there and that's really attributed to that um, that gateway hardware and the way that it handles the traffic so um, yep, so I'm, I'm not getting the super fast one, but I promise you it, it actually typically does every once in a while I get these slower speeds They're still significantly faster than the G4 AR and the internal and external antennas with that one as well So very impressive. All right. Thanks everyone for watching. Please do put your comments down below I do try to read those give me that thumbs up uh, button on the video as well and consider subscribing if you have not already and then stay tuned for more videos. You can put a comment down below if you want to suggest a specific test or video or something you want me to cover as well. I do like to take viewer uh, suggestions there. Okay, thanks, and we'll see you next time.